Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Photography, done at its highest level, is where art and technology meet. When it's done on a spiritual level, it's where the heart and the brain meet. Photography is a subtractive art form. Painters start with an empty canvas and they add layer upon layer upon layer of paint to create their images. Photographers, it's subtractive. We start with the whole world with millions of colors and we draw little rectangles around things and we say, look at this, look at what I saw. Early in my career, 45 years ago, I started shooting black and whites back in New York, and I found myself drawn to mysterious places. In, in this image where half the frame is blocked, half the frame is open, and I was trying to confront something real in my life. I was drawn to abandoned places, like this house in Brooklyn, where you could almost feel the spirits of humans who formerly were there. And of course I was drawn to the mysteries, both internal and external mysteries. And although during this first year of my work, I took hundreds, thousands of photos, some of them better than others, I noticed that there were some that resonated with me in a way that others did not. And it didn't necessarily mean because a photo was good or bad, but there was another kind of resonance in me. <coughs> Excuse me. And I came to find the, in time that it was what I call conscious camera work, actually combining our brains with our heart. To understand the process, you have to know a little bit about the eye and the brain to start with. The most important thing is in our retina, where we see, there's a, a cell and a single path from that cell back to a receptor in our visual cortex. Every other organ in our body has a trunk system, like our veins and our arteries, where one leads into another and they branch out and get smaller and smaller and smaller as they get away from the brain but the eye has a one-to-one -one relationship. So in a very real sense, the eye is where your brain sticks out of your body. We have to also look at the chakra system. If you've done yoga, you probably know what the chakra system is. Buddhists and Hindus have long recognized seven energy centers that flow from the top of our head through our body to our root chakra. And the heart chakra is right here. Now what happens in conscious camera work is that you're connecting your heart with your brain. And the way you do it is by holding the camera. It starts with holding the camera properly with a relaxed base and a very firm upper torso, with the camera to your eye, not looking at the back of the camera or, or your phone, but the camera to your eye. And that's the brain part of it. The heart part of it comes in because your heart chakra is connected to your index finger. So if your index finger is on the shutter and your brain through your eye is in the camera, we can use the camera to connect these two things. And when this happens, I call it conscious camera work. So with this knowledge, I went out to explore my world. And I waited for that feeling. It wasn't so much about what I saw, but it was about what I felt. And this is an image from early 70s. People going to work first thing in the morning, a woman carrying her bag lunch, a guy in a uniform probably hustling off to his train or his bus to get to work on time. I took a walk by the old school 
and saw this fight going on. <clears throat> and there was a part of me that wanted to go break up this fight, but then I realized I had been, every single person in this photo, I had been that person at one time or another, and it made more sense to me to record the moment than it did to interfere with it. Found loneliness everywhere I went, in the streets, in the subways, because that was where my spirit was at the moment. In the early 70s, I started my first major project called the Neon Series. And I was obsessed with the idea that photography was about time, it was about moments. Like how long could a moment be? So I went down to Times Square on a number of occasions and I'd focus on the neon lights that would say Joe's Diner or whatever they would say. And I would focus on them and I'd begin to move my camera. And when I got that feeling from my heart, I squeezed the shutter. And we created a bunch of images that were, for me at the time, extremely exciting, really different from anything I'd ever done before or since. And ultimately, in the process of this project, I, I met a choreographer. We ended up using these slides in a dance program in a basement in a church in Brooklyn. And that was really a wonderful time for me. I never expected to be a newspaper photographer. Uh, the circumstances were just amazing that I fell into it, but I did. Um, a lot of you know my work from the Daily News from the 80s and the 90s. Um, this was a little bit earlier than that, and uh, it was my first week on the job. This was a protest at the Senate. The people who wanted to bring Ishmael Ali, or Ishmael Labit, back to the territory. For people who don't know, Labit was a, um, a mastermind behind the Fountain Valley Massacre and was in prison in the States. And I was there to photograph this rally that people wanted to bring him down. And I realized that my spirit was such that I was able to get close to people and bring back images because people trusted me. They weren't afraid to have me there with their cameras. And there was an intimacy there that was really, really hard to capture in any other way. This is a gentleman from St. Croix, and that's his house behind him. After he shot some photos, he invited me into his house and offered me something to eat. Would you like something to eat? He opened the refrigerator, and there was a bottle of water and two apples. He took one of the apples and put it in front of me and poured me some water. I said, I can't eat your apple. He insisted that I eat the apple. To this day, I'll never, ever, ever forget that moment and the joy that he shared with me and the intimacy that he shared with me. Now, over and over again, I'd be in situations with this gentleman who's being evicted from his home in hospital ground, with this woman who lived in Livoni Projects, invited us into her house. This is her daughter and their grandchildren, two of the grandchildren. This is another one of the grandchildren. And my point is that people would not be inviting me into their homes and showing me these things unless they trusted me. And that trust wouldn't have been there without my conscious camera work. Very, very rewarding to be with people who feel that way and who give you that authority to shoot with them. This is a boy named Michael Berwick, who I met in Boston when I was working and living there. He had spinal bifida, basically had no lower half of his body whatsoever. Um, I, I became friends with him. His mother invited me into their home. I spent the better part of two weeks photographing them. And again, it was the level of trust. I became really proficient at environmental portraiture, which really is 
portraiture with everything out of control. Um, a fly on the wall approach of me recognizing in others something inside of me. And again, I was always waiting for that feeling, that special feeling that my heart was telling me, this is the moment. Some of you may recognize Sean C. Miller, who's one of the finest portrait painters on the island. This is for a magazine story we did. And again, she invited me into her bedroom and let me photograph her in this really special and unique way, and allowing us insight into who she was. And sometimes just recognizing the moment in others is the same thing as recognizing the moment in yourself. And sometimes all you need is a face, just a simple face that just can tell an incredible story. And it doesn't have to be an old face, but sometimes those lines do add up to more than lines. A couple of years ago, I opened up my first studio first time in 40 years I ever had access to a studio. And I started realizing that the studio gave me the freedom for even more intimacy in my work. And people would be come to the studio and they'd be willing to shed their clothes and be part of my project, which was based with people with tattoos. It was called Portraits in Ink. And many people came uninhibited, and in, in a way, it was a way for me to explore my own sensuality. And I loved working with couples, um, because when you photograph couples, you photograph not just two people, but you photograph a relationship. And I always like to say, who's hiding behind whom? And it's really powerful when you're shooting couples. From that series, I did come up with two iconic images, which I feel are bigger than the portraits themselves. This one in particular, where we have a light-skinned, beautifully, delicately tattooed woman against a brown-skinned man with the most perfect map of the Virgin Islands you'll ever see in tattoo form. And it's just really a unique and special moment. And also this one, which I call Adam and Eve for the 21st century. And it was just an opportunity that wouldn't have existed if these people didn't trust me. And they wouldn't trust me if I hadn't gone through this process. Now looking back over the years, I realize there is a consistency to my spirit. That, that this conscious camera didn't change my spirit, but it deepened it. This image was taken at St. Peter and Paul Cathedral on Good Friday 35 years ago. This one was taken at a synagogue in Florida last month. This old man on the waterfront from 40 years ago, an old man from last year. Lost boy from 20 years ago. Lost boy from five years ago. Mother Earth from 40 years ago, and a sea goddess from last year. Now there is a time when that connection is, becomes impossible, and it's usually when the senses are blocked by tragedy. And in this case, we had a suicide in our family. And I took some pictures literally just to keep from going crazy. And I didn't make any connection until months later when I kept looking at these images over and over in my computer. I started adding text. And suddenly, things began to make sense. And what if prayer worked now? How powerful would that be? So what I would ask you to do, the people who have cameras out there, if you have a DSLR, if you have a mirrorless camera, camera you can look through, I want you to try that. I want you to try looking through the viewfinder and listen to your heart. Here's the last picture. Listen to your heart and see if you can make that connection. And perhaps your journey will be as deep and as rich as mine was.
Thank you very much.